I have an outlet and a light switch that are sunken or recessed into the wall. I'm going to show you a couple of ways I'd fix that. Before you work on an outlet or a light switch or a light, you want to make sure the power's off. I've turned off the breaker, and now to make sure that I have no power coming to the outlet or light switch, I'm going to check it with some testers. I don't have any lights lighting up on this tester, so I know I don't have power to this outlet. Now I know I don't have power coming to either the outlet or the light switch. In my case, I'm working on an electrical box that's called an old work electrical box. When you put the box in, the tangs or tabs of this electrical box sit up flush against the sheetrock. When you put an old work electrical box into a wall, after you cut the sheetrock and put that box into the wall, you screw these screws in. As you're screwing these screws in, a little flag or tab comes up that secures the box to the sheetrock on the back. This is a new work box. The way you install these, you put the box in the wall up against the stud and you drive in the nails. There'll be two nails, one here and one here. My point to raising the old work box versus the new work box is that what I'm going to show you applies to both. Now I'm going to loosen these screws on the light switch and the outlet. These are spacers or shims that are used to bring out recessed outlets and light switches. Each shim is an eighth inch thick. If you need more than an eighth of an inch, you bend them and stack them on each other. You can cut them or just tear them off. I need to bring out the light switch and outlet about an eighth of an inch, so I'm going to use only one spacer. There's an opening on one side of the spacer. You put that opening over the screw and push the spacer on. You can remove the screw to put the spacers on, but you don't need to. I keep my finger on the spacer so it stays horizontal. You can also use popsicle sticks to bring out recessed outlets and light switches. These popsicle sticks are a 16th inch thick. Center the popsicle stick. I'm going to put the face plate on so you can see how this looks. I'm going to remove the popsicle sticks now from the outlet and show you a couple of other items you can use to bring out a recessed outlet or light switch. And most of these items I'll show you, you have around the house. If you use a popsicle stick and you want to drill a hole through it, to put the screw through it, use a drill bit that's 5 30 seconds. I also wanted to add you can use a paint stick just like you would a popsicle stick with a hole in it or not. Use a utility knife or a hacksaw to cut the size you need, and then put it behind the ears of the outlet or light switch. The other things I'll show you that you can use to require you to bring the screws all the way out so you can get something behind them. You can use styrofoam from a styrofoam cut. I cut a piece out of it. I cut the strip into little squares and used an ice pick to make a hole. You can put the styrofoam squares on that screw and screw it in. You can also use washers, flat or beveled, 
Just depends on how much you have to bring out that outlet or light switch. These are washers that go on shower valves, hose bibs, and shutoff valves. Pull the screw out, put the washer on, and screw in the screw. Put as many washers as you need on to bring out the outlet or light switch. You can also use different sorts of tubing. This is clear vinyl tubing, inside diameter 3 8 outside diameter a quarter of an inch. I use side cutters or scissors to cut the tubing. You just cut it to whatever size you need. Put the tubing on the screw and screw the screw in. That tubing will hold that outlet or light switch out for you. You can also use washers as spacers. Quarter inch is a good size. You stack them, put them behind the screw, and screw the screw in. You can use nuts as spacers. You can use pipe insulation as a spacer. Put a hole in it with an ice pick. Use some scissors to cut that piece off. Then you put the pipe insulation on the back of the screw and screw it in. Keep in mind that this pipe insulation will compress, so you just keep adding pieces as you need to. You can use cardboard to make spacers, but you have to keep in mind this type of cardboard compresses easily. You want cardboard that's fairly firm, that's not going to compress as much. This is a piece of cardboard from a cereal box. This is the best type of cardboard to use when you're shimming a door hinge or making a spacer for something like this, like an electrical outlet, because it doesn't compress. You take the cardboard and you just fold it. When you have the thickness of cardboard that you need, punch a hole through it with an ice pick. Do that on a firm surface so you don't hurt yourself. Push the ice pick through to widen the hole so you can get that screw on. Cut off this piece or any excess, then screw the screw in. If you lose these little keepers that go on the screws for your outlets and light switches, cut a little piece of this cardboard, punch a hole in it, just as I showed you with an ice pick or something larger so that it fits around this screw tightly. And it'll do the same thing for you that this keeper will. I'd also use copper wire to bring out a recessed outlet or light switch. Here's how I made that loop. Needle nose pliers. And just wrap that wire around those needle nose. however many times you need. There's many things around your home that you can use to make spacers for recessed outlets and light switches. You don't need to buy expensive products to do this. And that's how I fix recessed outlets and light switches. Hope it helps and happy DIYing.